We are told not to feed our desires for sex, alcohol, drugs, etc. But what about our desire to be close to God? Also, when we feel that connection and bliss, isn't that feeding our human need for satisfaction of our desires? Okay. So one of the very common topics that we talk a lot about in satsang is desires and how do we become free of our desires? How do we become freed from that? It's not the desires themselves that are the problem. Desires are wonderful. Your desire to be here in Rishikesh is what has brought you to Rishikesh. Your desire to be on the banks of Ganga, to have an experience of inspiration is what brought you here. Your desire to experience spirituality and divinity is what made you come to Arthi instead of just go sit in a coffee shop and have a cup of tea or coffee and chat with friends. Desires are actually the energy that moves us. If we don't have a desire, why get out of bed in the morning? If there's no desire for anything at all, nobody would ever get out of bed. Or if we did, we would do it merely out of habit. And as we all know, the point of, of our lives is to do it with awareness and consciousness, not just on autopilot. So why do we get out of bed? We get out of bed because we have desires. On a spiritual path then, why do we say, let go of your desires, be free of your desires. Why do we talk about that? And the reason for that is not that the desire itself is wrong. It's that what happens when we desire something is if it doesn't happen, we become very upset. So for example, we have our beautiful young children in front. I love having kids in the front, thank you. It's Diwali. Maybe they had a, a desire for some special Diwali present, for desire, I want this truck, or I want that game, or I want these clothes. No problem with the desire. Maybe it was them who had the desire to come to Rishikesh. Wonderful. Whatever the desire is for, there's no problem. But let's say that we have a desire for a new pair of pants. Okay. That desire itself is not a problem. What happens though is we don't get the new pair of pants. Now we are frustrated. We are angry. We are upset. But I told you I wanted a new pair of pants. Or I told you I wanted this truck. Or I told you I wanted this book. Or I wanted this game. When we're young, the I told you tends to be toward our parents. As we get older, the I told you tends to be toward our loved ones, other members of our family. Sometimes it's even God. But God, you knew. You knew that I needed to have this or I needed to have that. This is the problem with desires. When they don't get fulfilled, we lose ourselves. And what happens then is it means as the outer condition is, so my inner condition is. In Hindi, we call the outer condition paristhiti. And we say, ki jase paristiti, as the outer condition, vese 
swastati, my condition, or man kistati, the condition of my mind, that's a recipe for disaster. Because the outer conditions keep going up and down. It's summer one day, it's winter the next day. It's warm one day, it's cold the next day. Stock market is in one direction one day, another direction another day. People around us are nice to us one day, not nice to us the next day. We like the way we look in the mirror one day, not the way we look the next day. And so when my attachment is to the fulfillment of my desires, that's not in my hands. That's in your hands. I'm happy if you treat me well. I'm happy if you do what I want. We see this again a lot with kids. Our children clean up the room. We're happy with them. They don't clean up their rooms. We are angry. Now what they learn is, what we hope they learn is just keep for God's sakes, they'll learn to clean up their rooms. But instead, what they learn is, look at how mom or dad, how their emotional state is so dependent on the location of my toys. My toys are outside, mom is angry. My toys are inside, mom is happy. It's a lesson that goes very, very deep. And the lesson is how I am should depend upon what people around me do. And this is where in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is so specific about relinquishing the fruits of our desires, the fruits of our actions. So I have a desire. I'm going to become CEO of this company. I get up every day early, I go to work, maybe right now I'm, I'm the male guy. But my desire is I should become CEO. Get up every day, go to work early, I work hard. I work honestly. I work sincerely. Nonetheless, a year goes by, two years goes by. I'm not getting the promotions that I know that I need. The desire is in my mind, but the fulfillment of that desire is in someone else's hands. That's in the hands of my boss. It's in the hands of my employer. It's in the hands of my supervisor who's writing up what a good mail clerk I am and sending it in to the administration. When they don't do what I want them to do, I'm depressed. And this is where Krishna says, we give up. We give up the attachment to the fruits of our actions. So when we talk about relinquishing desires, it doesn't mean thou shalt lose your energy for life. Thou shalt become very, very dull and listless. You should never want anything. Don't use your creativity, don't use your in initiative, don't use your compassion. That's not what Krishna is saying. What Krishna is saying is the only thing in your hands is your actions. Do not set your mental state, your emotional state to be dependent on what someone else does. So that's what we relinquish. Now, the questioner asked very specifically about our desires for sex, alcohol, drugs, etc. Now, we're not here on earth that we're born with a desire for drugs and alcohol. We're born with a desire for joy, for connection, for peace. The drugs and alcohol, the shopping, come when we're not fulfilling that. 
When we're not feeling the joy, the peace, the connection in our life, that's when we turn to things like alcohol and drugs or shopping or overeating or indiscriminate sex or whatever our coping mechanism may be. There's no inherent desire that's a functional desire for drugs and alcohol or for overeating or for indiscriminate sex or for shopping for things you don't need. These are not, these are not core desires. They're not even what we would call positive or functional desires. They're desires to numb my awareness of the present moment. That's not even actually a real desire. I'm not going to go too much in that direction, but typically desires are things we're grabbing. Desires are something I really want. I want success. I want love. I want happiness. I want them because I believe they will actually make me happy. Drugs and alcohol are things that actually I'm using to push the world away. They're not a grasping, they're a pushing. I turn to drugs and alcohol only because what I'm really looking to do is push away my present moment, push away what I'm feeling, push away what I'm going through, push away what I'm experiencing. So if I have a burning desire for drugs or alcohol or seven chocolate cakes or to shop till I drop, the goal is not to become desireless. In those moments, those, desi those desires are actually giving us a very important message. It's not how can I just now push the desires away. The desires are there to push my life away. The answer is not now just push those things away. The answer is how can I use those specific desires to understand what is going on? What am I looking to push away? What sorrow am I looking to drown? What emptiness am I looking to fill? What moment am I looking to get out of? They are great, great keys to our own introspection. So when you have desires for things that you know are not good for you, the stuff most of us desire is either good for us, love, joy, connection, peace, or is something that we believe is a path to getting love, joy, connection, peace, success, beauty, money, popularity, fame. We all think through these things I will find happiness. Nobody who has ever been drunk or drugged really thinks that they're going to find great joy through that. You only have to do it once before you wake up the next morning and go, oh my God, what did I do? We do it again because we are, are pulled by the, the temporary break it gives us from what we're experiencing in the moment. So these are, these are the two aspects of desires. One is the, the desires that catalyze our lives Great, have them, but just don't attach our peace, our joy, our happiness unto whether they actually get fulfilled. Have them with an awareness that I don't really have any control over it. I could have a great desire to spend Sunday at the beach. I could plan a wonderful trip to the beach with my family and my friends. Maybe I plan even like a great bandara. We're going to feed people. We're even going to do service. And then it rains. Well, 
When I'm planning my trip at the beach, I do so with an awareness on some level that it could rain. I still plan. I still hope. I still use my initiative. I use my creativity to plan this event. But if it rains, I don't end up so miserable that my desire wasn't fulfilled. So this is, this is how we live with those desires. And when we find that what we're desiring is an escape, then ask yourself, what is it I need to escape? And how can I learn to actually be here in this moment and to change whatever it is I need to escape? Rather than looking for drugs or alcohol to get out of the moment, how can I turn the moment into something that I can live with, that I can learn from, that I can grow from? Otherwise, you spend your whole life just drinking your way out of moments, using your way out of moments, shopping your way out of moments. And that's not what we were put here for.